So data analytics uh, is a big topic these days um, and it's been discussed in many platforms, forums and people talk about data analytics, data science and data science is considered the most sexiest uh, profession in 21st century. I don't doubt it because of the demand that we have for data science uh, community and specialists. Um, so why we cannot ignore analytics is there are few reasons that any organization or a country or a person needs to understand uh, from a output perspective. The, as humans, we are biased. We, are, we have our biases. There are many biases so that we are not objective in making decisions. The two ways that we take decisions are system one decisions and system two decisions. System one decisions we take from intuition. We take it very fast. We don't do logical analysis. There is no data backing it. That's how I feel based on my intuition. I take system one decision. System two decisions are more structured. There's a logic behind it. There's a rationale behind it. There is data backing it. And it takes a little bit of time as well. So as an individual or a person, there is no harm taking system one decisions. But if you are an organization and if you are working uh, for, a, for your country, if you are taking decisions on behalf of your, your community, it's always best to use system two approach in decision making. The fundamental reason is if you take a decision, you can come back to the decision on why did you make that decision? What are the data that was backing that decision? what was the rationale behind the decision. So basically it will reduce some of the biases humans have. So humans have many biases, but few of them are confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is we perceive data that what we get is based on our previous experience and understanding. So how much you try to uh, introduce new information there, there's a way that people perceive that information. And also, if you talk about trimming as a bias, what happens is based on our current stimulus, the way we feel now, the way that we uh, absorb information is different. So that's why people say don't take decisions when you're hungry or when you're in a rush to go somewhere. So there's another bias called a framing effect. So framing effect is about how you present the data. Based on the way you present the data, the person who receives the data, uh, the, how he understands it can change. For example, uh, same data you can present in a positive way or a, a victory or a win or a happiness. The same data you can present it in a negative way, people will perceive the information differently. So analytics is required to reduce these human biases. Human biases won't go away. But if you have right information, intelligence and the data in front, uh, the biases can be reduced. At the same time, if you look at the global context as well as any consumer market, there are four things that's happening now. So that means the consumer is changing. There are a lot of changes in consumers. Consumer is becoming digital with the, even with this COVID um, pandemic, people are moving to more digital purchases. Uh, digital services and in terms of organizations they are also getting digitized so they are moving from the analog processes of manpower management to planning to billing to invoicing they are moving into more of a digital workspace so what happens when these consumers and the workspaces are getting digital you would start generating data so this data getting accumulated every day every hour every minute in multiple systems that we use. It can be personal systems like social media, or it can be organization systems like SAP, Oracle, or Workday. So these digital systems continue to uh, add data to uh, databases, right? So, with the, if, so that's where the data is created. So if you don't have digitization, even with the form of Excel or basic um, apps, there won't be any data to analyze with. So data analytics start with digitization. Digitization generates data for analytics. And since these uh, processes are so 
so much used and uh, people are getting adapted to digital the number of data sets that generated are high the volumes of data that is getting generated are high the variety of data that is generated are high and the velocity of the data that is coming to us are high so if there is high variety volume and velocity in a data set which we can't handle in our own computing power we call it as big data so for some organizations what becomes big data is not big data for some organizations so based on your capabilities so um, big data is a word that we use to explain the current amount of data that we handle is big um, and also the change that means with this data and the insights businesses are making pivotal changes the way we do things the processes are changing how we created products are changing how we work at workplaces are changing how we treat our customers are changing so that ensures change so these four things are happening as we speak and data analytics is becoming a critical part of this change also organizations are now very clear to understand your knowledge converted to digital that becomes data and that is a asset and how you do things if you digitize those things it becomes a real value for the organization so organizations are putting a lot of efforts to extract this data store this data and derive intelligence out of this data and treat data as an asset so the governance also works around data now is a big component of uh, the the fraternity the data governance piece because if it's an asset we should protect if it's an asset we should grow if it's an asset we should put to use that there will be a return out of it and industry 4.0 is the talk of the town and every every industry is moving into industry 4.0 in simple industry 4.0 is information driven and uh, um, uh, information driven industry where the decisions will be made on uh, live data connected data and also network data that is generated from multiple assets people and location also digital supply network is a common topic that we talk these days that means the whole supply network from raw material producer to transporter to manufacturer and how it goes back to the customer everything has getting digital and the information is generated in multiple places so that supply network can be managed as a co so opposed to a linear uh, supply network we had uh now we are talking about a co digital platform where the information is taking decisions in terms of how much to produce how much to order how much to send to customer how much customers will buy how much should be our supply chain capacity all those things are determined by the information that's generated around um these networks so all in all uh, data analytics is quite big and every organization today is trying to get on to it some are slow some are fast some are investing heavily and some uh, organizations are trying to acquire the required knowledge to get into analytics i think with this module also you will get one step ahead of the rest to get into this field of data analytics and data analytics is not only for a certain fraternity it's nothing to do with like a rocket science it's all about your profession whatever the profession that you would be whether you are a doctor or a accountant or a sales person there is lot of uh, lot of benefit that you can derive out of analytics either for you as a professional or for your organization so when it comes to the topic of data science uh, it's uh, we can decode it into data so i talked about data a little bit of data and science is about the scientific approach we take so the scientific approach is basically you have a problem or you have a hypothesis then you set up experiment you do the experiment you derive the observations and come to conclusion so even we can't do lot of experiments on physical grounds with data we can do multiple experiments on the things that are happening day to day um, in the organization so from a analytics perspective we have three types of analytics one is descriptive so that explains the current situation and the past 
prescriptive analytics uh, helps us to uh, make decisions so it will prescribe the data will prescribe what to do and what not to do predictive analytics is about our capability of looking at past patterns and relationships among data sets to say the probability of something happening or not happening so um, all analytics will evolve around these three types of analytics and analytics programs if you are getting into organization or at a department level or a country level it should uh, give either of these four benefits one benefit is it should be it should help us to engage our customer so the way we engage our customer is changing customer experience is enhancing and customer is buying more from us um, that makes a value out of analytics so after you study the relevant data about consumer if you can improve the engagement of the consumer that's a real impact of analytics the other uh, place analytics plays a big um, influence is to transform our products the way we create products the speed of we creating products the quality of the products the lead time of the product, the cost of the product. So all those can be improved if you really use right data to make decisions. The other piece is the operation, op operational optimization. So any process that you work in, whether it be manufacturing, whether it be services, whether it can be transport, whether it can be learning or teaching. So all those things can be optimized uh, through looking at data and trying to improving your operational KPIs because you have more insights and more patterns and more uh, trends to look at uh, when you have the right data about your operations. Uh, if we can't get any uh, return in terms of customer, product, or opera, operation, at least it should give an impact on your employees. It should be able to improve your employees' capabilities to make smarter decisions, uh, improve themselves as a people, and or either ease their effort so that they can have a better balance in work and the things that they do uh, in and out of the organization. So this data and insights should be driving impact. So any analytics program that you want to get into, you need to first define what are you trying to achieve and when you achieve that, what change the organization should take. So this is a brief introduction to analytics before we get into the tool and the Power BI component. So in terms of uh, building these uh, analytics capabilities within the organization, the two components that you need to focus is one is the data capabilities, the other one is the culture. So with this program, you are trying to get data capabilities. That means you are going to know about how to capture data properly, and also to store and visualize data using Power BI as a tool. But there are these, each of these areas are vast areas and then if you are interested, you can learn more about how to capture data, how to store data and how to visualize data and how to predict data. The other piece is the cultural change. So even you have all these capabilities it's as a country or organization, there is no change that's going to happen until data analytics becomes way of life. So that means we are getting uh, slowly moving from system one to system two and as a behavior everybody wants to back their decisions by data. So as the organizations move to inform decision making the true potential of analytics is reached. Maybe it can be five years or it can be ten years. It takes long time to change this culture. So the tool that we are going to learn um, in these modules is one uh, this power bi architecture so uh, let me explain so the tool that you are going to learn is power bi desktop which you need to download from powerbi.com so it's a free tool that you can download and then what have what you see here is there's a lot of other data sources it can be directly connected to power bi desktop or the power bi services so Power BI services is basically a web service. So what you do in Power BI, you can push it back to the service and uh, this uh, service can then automatically extract the data and uh, keep your reports live. With this uh, Power BI service, it will move into access 
through Power BI website as well as mobiles or tabs, you can start consuming this data. So the tool that we will learn is Power BI Desktop, which at the end we will learn how to publish it into the web. So the three components that you need to understand in Power BI is the Power BI Desktop, Power BI Service and also Power BI Mobile. These are the three components that is used uh, to visualize and communicate the data that you are going to analyze.